All right, Wayne D. Francesco here. And make sure you visit my website at waynedfrancesco.com. And you're looking at Tiger Woods. It was uh, jump all over Tiger Woods swing week here at the Memorial. And let's listen to Nick Faldo give his brilliant examination of Tiger's problems here. Let's actually have a close-up look at Tiger's swing on the par 3. So you watch the to take away. There's a bit of a drag. You see how the hands went away before the club and then you watch it where it's pointing. Look, it's pointing in the trees, then he loses his level, right hip goes to, towards the ball, may have even caught that fraction at fat and you can tell a, a, a golf away, this would be a very interesting one. Now, I'm sure if he's going with five wood with this yardage, he's trying to hit a fake, trying to chop it up into the air again, but look, it's the level and then he's kind of it's the leg action, very stuck, very forward on top of the ball. You know, very, Gary McCall came out with a very interesting fact. He's one of the few players who's actually hit his driver on a descending blow. Everybody else kind of hangs back and launches it. So, Tiger's deaf, as we would call it, stuck. Oh. So, Tiger's definitely stuck, right? <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Let's take a look. So, you'd have to call stuck something where the shaft was coming in underneath the right arm. Well, there's the shaft. That looks pretty perfect to me. Now, the thing that I like about this swing, and I think it's going to eventually play out in a good way for Tiger, is his wrist looks more neutral at the top, and you can't see the club face hanging straight down. So, I'm guessing that he has tinkered with his grip a little bit and added a knuckle maybe and strengthened it up and maybe moved it a little more down in his hand from the palm a little more toward toward his fingers. If we, if we take a look at a different saying compare this here, there's a swing from last year when he won over at the uh, over Congressional but let's take a look, maybe compare. Now he does look like he's out over the ball a little bit more, which I kind of like that too. Um, I think he studies pictures of Hogan, and I think he likes to emulate some of the stuff that, that Hogan does. But if we look at these swings, pretty similar, but I, I notice a slight variation in the wrist. So as, as Faldo and uh, these geniuses like Charlie Reimer look at his swing. First of all, yeah, the club's pointing in the trees because it's short of parallel and it's, and it's pretty much on plane. It might be a fraction laid off, but he's been doing this for quite a while now uh, with great results. You know, people are ranking on Haney. He only won half the tournaments he played in while Haney was trying to help him. So I actually like him being a little more out over it. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to help him finish up without... See, I like that action, actually, more so than this one where he always looks like he's trying to keep the ball from going out to the right with pulling his right shoulder up. Now, he hit a bad shot, and every time he hits a bad shot, all you ever want to hear about is his level, right? But you can take his swing from, from anywhere, anytime, if you look at my website, I have a number of, of swings on there. This is from Dubai two years ago. And you'll see that he always does this. Now, and again, as I pointed out before, for anybody who, who thinks that's somehow not a good idea, it's just, it's pretty simple. Just, just take a look at, uh, take a look at Ben Hogan's swing. And you'll see right away that if you look at the level of Hogan's head while he swung, it went down in the back swing as he added depth with the right hip. And then it went down again in transition as he hit the ground and shoved off. So I don't buy it. And Charlie Reimer made a point, again, of how much his head was dropping. I would prefer to think that that's why he's so good. And if you're thinking about 
Nick Faldo. I mean, here's a guy who weighed 225 odd pounds and couldn't hit the ball over 270. And when the drivers and the balls got hot and everybody started hitting it further, he just quit. Now he's up in the booth talking about how Tiger's swing is, is this, that, and the other. Tiger has a great golf swing. And he's going to kick everybody's ass pretty soon anyway. So Nick Faldo, Charlie Reimer, Peter Costas, Johnny Miller, I, I think all you guys are going to just eat it. Because, again, Faldo made the point in this particular swing that Tiger was stuck. Look where the shaft is. That is so not stuck. It's just, it's ridiculous. So every time the guy gets a bad shot, everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon and start ranking on his swing. He's won 14 majors. He's going to win more. He's just better than everybody else, and he's got a great golf swing. So this action where he compresses into his waist and his butt goes back, that's the action that everyone is doing. Everybody is using that, all the new guys are incorporating that because there's power in it. If you go back and look at if you go back and look at Faldo's swing, you don't see it. And here's a guy who never never took advantage of his size. He just never hit the ball anywhere even though he was a huge guy. Because he lifted. There he is. Doing the opposite of Tiger. And if you watch him, talk about, you can't help but lower into the forward swing. So there he lowered. See his head? But he popcorns the ball compared to just everybody that, that has more of the lowering in their swing. So as far as I'm concerned, when Faldo is the biggest disappointment I've ever heard as an announcer, he should know way more than he does. He has no clue. He doesn't observe he doesn't study anyone else's swings. He just says conventional stuff. And it's like he should know way more than that. So, so Nick Faldo, brush up, buddy. All right.